Hi everyone, Teddy Baldassar with teddybaldassar.com. In this video, we're looking at a watch from Bulova with their Chrono C96K101. So in this video and on this channel, we cover watches available for purchase on our website, teddybaldassar.com as a full authorized dealer. So in this video, take a closer look at this watch, final points of consideration at the end, but also throughout this video, if you have further questions, check out the link in the description down below to the product page where you can learn more, purchase the watch, and of course, book a time with one of our dedicated watch specialists as well. But guys, let's jump into the video, take a closer look at this watch. In 1970, Bulova introduced a large sporty chronograph simply named the Chronograph C that featured an impressive red, white, and blue color scheme. Collectors continue to seek out this model and become one of the more collectible Bulova references now being known as the Stars and Stripes. But in this video, we're looking at the reissue of this original 1970s design with a high frequency quartz movement on the inside to have some optimal accuracy in the process, that sweeping second hand, and a design and look that certainly looks back to this period. So now the first thing we need to discuss when looking at this watch is the dimension set. This is going to have a lugless design. So this case is a perfect circle outside of those extending pushers at the three o'clock, two o'clock and four. But other than that, you're dealing with a full 45.5 millimeters in its design all the way around. Now this is going to create two different dynamics. One is it's not going to create any overhang because there are no lugs on this watch, which is visually a different type of approach, but also that dial, because of the thin outer bezel, no lugs, it's going to optically appear very large, which it indeed is. Thickness on here is at 14 millimeters, so that is the least substantial measurement of all the standard points of measurement of this watch design. Really, the main thing here is it's going to feel everything like a 45 and a half millimeter watch across, but from top to bottom, it wears nothing like this. There's gonna be no concern of overhang in pretty much any instance. This is going to be a benefit to the wearer, but also I don't think we should downplay the fact that this is going to be a larger watch, uh, but you kind of have to see this on wrist to get a full idea and how it's going to work. As for the case finishing, we have a vertically brushed center case with flat surfaces paired with a knurled yet fixed bezel where the interchanging surface finishes of brush and polish make its way around the sides of that bezel. From there, we have an entirely polished anterior bezel surface elevating the overall look of the Chronograph C as it's the only case surface facing the wearer when you are looking directly at the dial. Along the right side of the case, we have a traditional chronograph setup with two polished pump pushers flanking the sign push-pull crown. Unlike the original chronograph C from the 1970s, this reissue replaces the mechanical Valju 7736 chronograph movement for the modern high-frequency quartz caliber, the NP20, which obviously requires no winding. Therefore, the crown operation is quite straightforward. Extending the crown all the way out, you will then be able to set the time. The chronograph here works in fairly typical fashion with the two o'clock pusher starting and stopping the chronograph while the four o'clock pusher resets the chronograph back to zero, which will then will float back to its resting starting position. Moving along to the bracelet, you have the 20 millimeter Milanese style attachment here, which is installed into a recessed case position that allows for both good articulation and will shoot straight down, but also the optionality for additional straps down the road. Now there is going to be not that much clearance in the way that the spring bars are going to be seated within that case, might not offer up the most of versatility, but it still is going to open up some possibilities unlike an integrated style that you might think when first looking at this watch. In terms of the bracelet itself, it is going to offer up a sizable amount of lengths on the side. They are almost sized to the degree of half length, so you should be able to get a nice fit. Also when using in combination with the four points of micro adjustment within the clasp. Now the clasp is stamped, so that is one point, but I find that it is actually well done. I also like the fact that it is going to be rather slim in pro file. Most stamp clasp I find with the overlocking uh, mechanism are just very bulky in practice and don't really help in the wearing experience. In this instance, you get a very lean and mean type of clasp, two button release to extend it and open it up. And you also are getting four points of micro adjustment in the process here. So very suitable for the price range. Overall is gonna do a nice job. Now transitioning back over to the dial, we have a very boldly designed combination of red, white, and blue. They gave the original Chronograph C its nickname 
same stars and stripes. The dome sapphire crystal does cause some distortion to the tachometer scale along the dial's perimeter. Largely though, a vast majority of the dial is clear, unobstructed with its view. The base dial color is a flat navy blue that is paired with a silvery white sector that divides that perimeter tachometer scale from the central dial. It is this silvery white sector where we find the large luminous hour markers with linear black borders to help them stand out from the similar background color. Three large subdials record the chronograph's elapsed time, including a quick moving one tenth register. This is going to stop after 30 seconds to preserve that battery life. Red triangle hands are fitted to each subdial matching the original 1970s version, and more of that red can be found at the triangular tips of the hour and minute hand, as well as with the center second hand. The hour and minute hands are polished up to the red triangles and are also equipped with sections of luminous material to complement the hour markers. In terms of loom, the Chrono C is actually quite good in the loom department. While not as intense as Citizen or Seiko by any means, the strength and vibrancy is surprisingly good for a watch that on the surface doesn't look it's going to have any luminous material at all. As far as dial text goes, only the 12 o'clock bull of the logo is printed with no mention of the model or any other specifications either to really remain true to the original. The watch's specs can be found when you flip the watch over and we have a solid steel pressured case back and along the outer edge of the case back, Bulova provides a lot of reference language we are used to seeing here as well as some information we normally would see on the dial. Specifically, you have the model serial number as well as the water resistance rating and the movement type. Now this MP20 movement inside is a high frequency quartz movement that operates at a blistering 262,000 hertz, about eight times faster than a standard quartz crystal. And with this level of precision and frequency, Bulova claims these movements to be accurate within seconds a year. This is the biggest change from the original 1970s issued Chronograph C, which I really think serves the modern Bulova buyer collector well. Clearly a mechanical option here would skyrocket the price. And for a watch that's gonna be around the five, $600 price range, I think this just starts to make a lot more sense. Also with this movement, you do have a sweep of that second hand, which I think people are going to like to see. It does beat with a solid frequency as well. So you are going to get that look as if you're going for a mechanical option while getting the up benefit of accuracy with a quartz oscillator. Final points in consideration on this watch and where it's positioned. I think the first thing that people are going to mention is the unconventional case and the size. It's going to have some presence, but with the lugless look of this watch, it is going to offer kind of a design style and approach that really isn't replicated much in the industry. It is going to be a 45 and a half millimeter watch, no question about it in terms of that, that diameter and what it's going to appear on the wrist, but also with the lack of lugs, it is going to create a top to bottom format that isn't going to really wear that way fully. So that is just something that is going to be strange for many. I think that is probably one of the number one driving forces behind this outside of just the looks itself. This is not going to be for everybody. It is red, white, and blue kind of has this patriotic type of look. You can see why people call this thing the stars and stripes. Uh, but from there, you also have some good things going for it. I think on the other side, people are going to like the design. This is colorful. It's playful. It's not something you see every day. And I think that is going to be a leading cause for why people might look in the direction. Loom is actually surprisingly quite good. And all things considered, I think it's a adequate bracelet, although maybe not the best for the price category. But I think the best thing about this is the movement. It's going to allow this one to be positioned in a price range that I think makes more sense. This is not a do-it-all style watch. This is a fun addition to a collection. And when your watch is priced well under $1,000, I think that makes it much more of a possibility for many people out there on the market. So simply put, I think this is a fun retro style chronograph, large dimension set, maybe not the greatest bracelet in the world and kind of limited options from the strap department. But still, if you like the design and what this is going for, and you're looking for a combination piece to maybe add to a full collection that could be that fun, playful type of variant within your watch box, I think that's when this one makes a lot more sense. All right, guys. Well, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon when future content uh, is posted. Also, if you're in the market for this watch, check it out on teddybaldesser.com. We're a full authorized dealer of over 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support. Also offer a full factory warranty for all of the new products that we carry and a new pre-owned section as well, where we have some of the best and curated watches authenticated by our team and tested in-house. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I will see you all very soon.